The Bible clearly forbids women pastors, but Catherine Crick's theology is terrible too. The rest of the time, you're called to just love people and see them with loving eyes, see them with good eyes, see the best in people. Like how God sees just people. He doesn't see all the dirt, he sees the beauty. Amen. Let's talk about it here on All Things Theology. Cue my theme music. All Things Theology, All Things Theology. We chop it up properly without an apology. Gotta get that theology to God, hallowed be, because this is how we do it at All Things Theology. Yo, grace and peace. Welcome back to an episode of All Things Theology, where this is your host, K Dub. And today, we're going to respond to Catherine Crick. But don't forget, after this video, stick around. It'll take you to a live where we will be continuing part two of Catherine Crick's book review. Don't want to miss that. But yeah, I wanted to respond to something that uh, I, I saw. I, I, I Let me just say this from the start. I sincerely believe, not trying to be humorous at all, that what Catherine Crick is starting is a cult group. And she is a cult leader. I, I am willing to stand 10 toes down on that on that claim and i'm going to demonstrate a lot of that here so let's let's get to our first clip of the day i want to be free i want to be pure i want to be clean i want to be religious free and then when the spirit of religion comes and accuses just like this the pharisees oh sorry i have to explain this because this was this was essentially about the spirit of religion the spirit of fair uh, being a pharisee today people use terms that often when you're called a um a Pharisee or religious is used as an insult. Let me just say this. I don't believe a lot of things that the Pharisees believe, yet I still will be labeled a Pharisee. Why? Because I critique Catherine Crick, right? And so the, people don't use words rightly as they were used in the Bible. They, they, Pharisee has become a whole new meaning today, right? As someone who cares about doctrine, <laughs> right? Uh, that, that actually was not the Pharisees. They were actually placing their tradition over doctrine, which Irony, we're going to see a lot of that here today from Catherine Crick and also the the uh, depth, the the word religion. Right. Let me just say this. Religion isn't a bad thing. Let me say something that might shock you. Um, how dare you? God loves religion. That might shock you. But if we're going to have the Bible be the ultimate authority, we can't let outside people who don't really believe the Bible like Catherine Crick and create a new vocabulary and import it onto people, right? Read James 127. God loves true religion. He hates false religion. Again, we're going to see that. But let's, sorry, I had to explain that, but let's keep going. Accuse Jesus. When the spirit of religion accuses your Jesus today, here and now, moving in the anointing, in the power. I don't know if you caught that. So she's saying, hey, you know, the Pharisees, the spirit of religion accused Jesus, and they accused your Jesus today moving in power we're gonna i'm gonna let her finish this but we're gonna explain that you will have eyes to see that's the religious spirit i'm not listening to that that's not truth i don't care what kind of degree they have what kind of position they have how popular they are how good of a preacher they are i don't care i see that's the religious spirit and i will not listen to that i rebuke that and yeah like a good cult leader Right. Don't listen to people who are uh, telling her the truth. Right. But the, for again, to get back on the phrase we were, we were just discussing about the Jesus of today, the Jesus of today is different than the Jesus of the Bible, because for Catherine Crick, God is doing a new thing. God is doing a new thing. And we need to hold on a second. I got to I got to sound the frick for that. Right. Hold on. Let me, let, 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 let. You know, he's doing it. Who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. You know, he's doing it. Yo, who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. Yeah, God is doing a new thing. So that's the new Jesus. That's the Jesus of today. The Jesus not found in scripture. No, no, no. God's doing a new thing. It can't be found in scripture, but you need to believe it. See, whenever someone wants to import a false doctrine, They'll say, oh, no, no, just God's doing a new thing today. She's she is about to say king of that, but she's queen of that. Right. I'm tired of church. But let's get to our next clip just to show you how unbiblical she is. Let's go. And so the scripture, it says, first, take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. 
Now this shows that when you are judging somebody, first of all, that's not your job. Your job is to love people. It's God's job to be the judge. Well, yeah, we're not the, the judge. I, absolutely, I would agree with her there. Uh, but we are called to judge. We, we can judge all things. Matter of fact, judgment begins in the house of the Lord. And so she's going to kind of make a caveat, but we're going to see this in a second. You judge fruits to see what ministry you're called to be planted at. You judge people's fruits to, to, to discern who you should bring close to your life. But that's a judging, not like judging a person like, ooh, you're bad. You're sinful. I mean, you, you, don't have to, you don't have to look down upon them and to say those things, but you can recognize that some people are sinful. I mean, we all are, right? All, you know, but I, again, Catherine Craig will say the one thing and then the Bible will say like the exact opposite. Watch this. But it's judging for your own good to know, oh, I, I'm not called to be here. Oh, I'm not called to bring this person close. That's the only kind of judging you should be doing. The rest of the time, you're called to just love people and see them with loving eyes. See them with good eyes. See the best in people. Like how God sees just people. He doesn't see all the dirt. He sees the beauty. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Um, how dare you? She says, you should see people for the good in them. The way God sees them. Beauty, right? Not the dirt. Well, there's a problem, and that problem is, right? Can we talk for a minute? The Bible says. The problem is the Bible gets in the way of that theology, right? As scripture says, right, which is inspired of God. None is righteous. No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. Their throat is an open grave. They use, I mean, go and read this passage on how good God sees man, right? To God, they're filthy. Our, filthy, our good deeds are filthy racks to God. What do you mean God sees the beauty? Now, I know that was a, a uh, you know, popular theology with me growing up. I, I remember hearing songs. He saw the best in me. <laughs> right? And then he died for it. Sure. Right. But no. God doesn't see the good in you. And, and, and she's talking about all the, the whole the whole world. Right. There is no good in man. I mean, that's the Bible's teaching. I, but I know I know God's doing a new thing. Right. So. That replaces what the Bible says, and that's pharisaicalism and, and religious to Catherine Crick. But again, see, I, I picked on the, the vocabulary of, of Catherine Crick, and it is, uh, well, it's very shallow, but it's unbiblical as well. But let's let's keep going, because now she's about to talk about the old wine. All right, let's, let's see what this old wine is. So the next part of the religious spirit is that they are offended by the new wine. The old wine conflicts with the new wine, just as the Pharisees conflicted with Jesus. So when we say spirit of religion, it really means old wineskin, just like the Pharisees. You can think of them as the same, old wineskin, Pharisee, religious spirit, old ways, and not accepting to the new wine. See, so there's this parallel. The same way the Pharisees didn't accept the new thing Jesus was doing, and I would even um, that needs to be qualified because Jesus wasn't doing something just radically new that, I mean, this was fulfillment of prophecy. So you got that to contend with. She so, so the same way Jesus was doing a new thing and the Pharisees rejected, there are Pharisees today who are doing, who are rejecting this new movement from God. You see the parallel? Well, one, I mean, if you, if you want to say Jesus was doing something radically new, it was prophesied in scripture. Where is the prophetic fulfillment that Catherine Crick is fulfilling? You see the problem? Again, she thinks she's that God's speaking to her some new thing never done before. And she can just claim. Prophesy. 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 But let's keep going. This is what happened when Jesus came. The Pharisees could not accept the new wine that Jesus brought. So the spirit of religion today has old wine skin and anything that's outside of their tradition of how church should be, of how what following Jesus looks like. 
anything that is outside of that, they cannot reject. They will call it of the devil. These, this is the, the spirit behind people who say. Well, now watch the ultimate proof of <laughs> we're of the devil, right? We're the Pharisees. Watch the ultimate proof. This one uh, was kind of uh, interesting. There are no more apostles today. That's a false prophet. Or there are no prophets today. This is the spirit behind. Well, yeah, there are, there are only limited apostles. What you don't see is the apostles making other apostles, right? But, um, right, one of the qualifications for an apostle was actually seeing the resurrected Jesus. So, yeah, you'd, you're not qualified on that list. And I would make a distinguishment between prophet. In one sense, all Christians are lowercase p prophets, right? In the sense that we speak uh, we hear from God, we speak the words of God, right? But I would argue, which that which is found in scripture, right? We're not receiving new revelation. We're just illuminating the revelation that God has already given. And in that sense, we're prophetic. Um, and so it's a bit of a, a nuance that I hope is helpful and, and that you can see that. But no, we're not, we're not prophets in the sense that we're, we're, we're getting new revelation in the same sense that the prophets in the Old Testament were. I would I would reject that. But again, she says, hey, hey, hey you know, she, she kind of mocks that idea. OK, right. But she goes further. People who say women cannot preach or be pastors. It's a spirit of religion. It is the same old wineskin the Pharisees had who could. Yeah. So if you reject that women can't be pastors, if you reject women pastors, then you are the spirit of religion. <laughs> yeah, I know the Bible teaches that. But she's going to get to that in a second. Right. Um, yeah, I know the Bible teaches women can be pastors. Right. And I know the pastors are only given qualifications to men. Right. Um, qualified men. And I know what the Bible says about all that stuff. But God's doing a new thing. Right. You know, he's doing it. Who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. You know, he's doing it. Yo, who's doing it? God is doing a new thing. Yeah, he's doing a new thing. He, yeah, you can't find this in the Bible, right? Let's keep going. Not accept God coming in a new way as he came through Jesus. It's the same thing. So when you, when you see that happening, you can know now what it is. You don't need to be like, well, why do they say women can't preach and pastor? Because they're blinded by the spirit of religion. <laughs> They're blind by the spirit of religion. Yeah, so if you can't accept, if someone says, hey, that can't be when, when papers, don't ask questions. Don't ask. Don't ask. Well, wh why? Why? Why do you say that? Just reject them. They're blind. You see, she assumes her conclusion. This is what you call the question begging fallacy. And it's also this. Gaslight. Or I'm thinking that's some type of arsonist. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, you're gaslighting. Why do people say there can't be apostles? Because they're blinded by the spirit of religion. Stop this, trying to understand. This is cult tactic 101. Don't deal with what people are saying, right? Reject them and don't argue with them, right? See, see she has no room for an apologetic. She can't defend the faith, right? All she can do is defend her cult, which is to ignore everybody. Stand them. And reason with them. Come, let us reason together. We, I mean, it's good we know biblically, and I have teachings on that, on how, why they're apostles today and why women should preach. God is calling them to preach and pastor. Yes, she does have teachings on that. And let me just tell you this. They're terrible. Absolutely, utterly terrible. Um, <laughs> and I've dealt with a lot of her, her videos on that. Um, and she's going to kind of give a quick little run down on that but they they are very very bad no, 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 no. it's good for us to know that but so many people they're trying they're thinking that the spirit of religion maybe has some truth or something and they're trying to figure out well what's the truth because these people i look up to they really believe so adamantly that apostles aren't around today and that women can't preach and that prophets aren't don't exist today either Spirit of religion. 
is blinding them, plain and simple. This is simply God's way. This is simply the new wine that God is restoring us as apostles and prophets to the body of Christ. Yeah, now show me that. Show me where God is restoring these things. See, in one sense, she'll say, yeah, it's the old wine skin, you know, kind of like in the Bible. God's doing a new thing. But then she'll make turn around and say, well, God's restoring back to what the Bible says. So, it, again, she makes a couple of arguments, right? She'll be like, God's restoring us back to the Acts church. Then, she, then when people hold her to that theology to demonstrate it or they, they show her how she's misunderstanding, well, God's doing a new thing, you know? So you have to be careful when people are making inconsistent, fallacious argumentation, right? Um. Amen? That God is using men and women to lead, to lead churches, to be fivefold offices, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. This is simply God's way, his biblical way that we haven't seen in a while. This is the new wine. So yeah, this is what many restorationist movements like uh, Mormonism, Jehovah's Witness claimed too when they first started. God's restoring these things. You haven't been seeing these for thousands of years, but God's going to start doing it now. Yeah, this is a restoration movement. Every cult, uh, general, generally every every Christian cult um, is heavily dependent upon it, right? I'm tired of the church. Yeah, but we are tired of this church. But let's go on to our next clip. Um, let, let's check this out. What do I have here? Are not going to be super spiritual people running the company and their employees aren't going to be all Christians. Oh, um, I thought this was interesting. Given her theology of Christians can have demons, I thought this was very interesting because in this clip, she's arguing, hey, it's okay to buy uh, clothes from non-Christian people. And I would agree with that. She's not wrong. But she says something interesting here. Some of them could have big, have, a lot of them have a lot of demons. This doesn't mean that demons are being transferred to your food or to your clothes. You are protected by the anointing. And some people think that way. They're like, oh, I'm scared. Now, I thought that was interesting because she said, hey, you're protected by the anointing. So, right, that's how you can't get a demon. But these same people get demons. So how how are they protected by demons when you argue Christians can have demons, even though they're anointed? It makes no sense at all. But that's Catherine Crick. Crick gives and she takes away. All <laughs> right. Uh, but I. Again, this this clip also goes to her theology as well, which blatantly contradicts scripture. Let's check this out. And, and it's different for all of you. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you differently to every person here. How much of the Bible he wants you to read a day and it will change throughout the season. So that's how it applies for everything. It's by the following of the Holy Spirit because you're close to God and you want to please him. And he's like the wind. He changes. He does a new thing. He's not into rigid, nitpicky rules. No, 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 no. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Did you hear what she just said? She said the spirit is like the wind, right? He just changes. I, I mean, I couldn't think of anything more unbiblical than that. The, when the, the Bible saying God changes not. <laughs> so the Bible says God changes not. Catherine Crick says, well, God's doing a new thing and he constantly changes like the wind. He's here, there, and there. Yeah, we're going to go with the Bible, <laughs> right? This is why I say Catherine Crick's theology is not rooted in what the Bible says, but rather her own, what is it, her own. But it was just my imagination. Yeah, my prayer is that people would get out of her church because it is possible that you have some genuine people in there, right? It's possible. But they need to get out, right? Because tweet that you can be saved and stupid. Right. But let's go to our next clip. Right. <laughs> let's go to our next clip here. Uh, I thought this was interesting justification for something she did just not too long ago. Here's a here's one. The spirit of religion has rules that you cannot honor a person too much. You cannot honor a servant of God too much. Did you hear that? There's no such thing as too much honor. She says, you can't honor a person too much. I would argue you can. 
because you're blurring the line on idolatry right now. But we've already seen how they idolat how, how many people have made Catherine Crick an idol. I mean, calling her their their mama, um, bowing down to her. But but she's going to get to that. Well, let's let's see what she has to say. The Bible says, give honor what honor is due. If there's a lot of honor due, you better give a lot of honor, not just what makes the spirit of religion comfortable. Did you hear me? Uh, yeah, you yelled When there's it. a lot of honor due, you better give a lot of honor due, not what makes the spirit of religion comfortable only. And I had the spirit of religion come out to play and judge and attack me when I honored my spiritual father at his church. In their culture there, they honor, one of the ways they honor is by getting on their knees, and that's honor, it's not worship. If you get on your knees and worship to God, that's worship to God. But if, when you get on your knees in honor to a person, it's honor, and it's seen as honor, it's not seen as worship, it's how they honor. L let me say this, because I can agree with her in some sense. There are some cultures who bow out of respect, especially I think of like more Asian cultures. They, they do do a lot of bowing. OK, that's fine. One, you did a lot more than bow. You literally equated this man to Jesus. So he nobody deserves that honor Two, people were equating her to Jesus when they bowed to her again. This isn't an issue of, of cultural customs. But again, she literally condones idolatry. This is why I say Catherine Crick needs to be avoided. By the way, if you're watching, don't forget, after this, we're going to go into a live and we're going to continue part two. We're going to continue part two of the book review. You don't want to miss it. So let's go to our last clip of today's video. Let's check this out. So, by the way, um, the, you'll, you'll find the spirit of religion, people that are offended by the new wine, they're going to be picking up scripture that they like only, and they twist it. With the irony is that's exactly what she does, and that's exactly what she's going to do in the following. Let's check this out. Wrong revelation. And they ignore the scripture that contradicts their wrong revelation. For example... Well, scripture doesn't contradict, but let's see what she has to say. They find a scripture that they believe is speaking that women can preach. But really, they're coming with wrong revelation without the context. They're twisting it. And they're ignoring the many, many other scriptures throughout the whole Bible, from the Old Testament to the New, to the New Testament. Well, He's, he chose her to reveal uh -huh. They're twisting it. So she's claiming we're the ones twisting scripture. We're the ones twisting scripture when the scripture says, hey, um, women are not to be in uh, authority over men. We're the ones twisting that. <laughs> I, I found that claim just so ironic that she's claiming that, that we're the ones twisting scripture. When, they, when the Bible gives qualifications for men, we're the ones twisting that. When the Bible lays the uh, authority of the man over the over the wife. Um in a complementarian role, we're the ones twisting that. And when it roots it in creation, we're the ones twisting that. <laughs> First Corinthians tells the women to be silent in the context of, of, of in the church of, of a uh, pastor. We're the ones twisting that. And it says all the churches, we're the ones twisting that. You see, she has no argument. As a matter of fact, the argument she's about to give is going to show how much she's the one twisting scripture. Let's, let's hear it. And they're ignoring the many, many other scriptures throughout the whole Bible from the Old Testament the New, to the New Testament of God. And like I said, to those who believe in women pastors, give me one, give me one verse that says a woman can be a pastor. Don't go. Don't give me verses about women doing great things. Don't give me Deborah, who was a judge. Don't give me, hey, a woman did something great. Therefore, women can be pastors now. No. No, no, no. Give me one verse. A woman can be a pastor. So you go to the go to the text about women or go to the text about pastors and give me a woman being able to do that. But they never can do that. You know why? Because the Bible is silent when it comes to a woman pastor. Matter of fact, it's not silent. It's loud saying they can't do that. Right. But but let's hear her argumentation. 
God using women in leadership, like as judges, like as prophetesses. Hold on. You want to talk about judges? Because I have a great verse about that. Because many people want to go to Deborah. One, that Deborah wasn't a pastor. Let's get that straight, right? Deborah was not a pastor. Um, but that actually was a sign of God's judgment. If you read Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12, it says, My people, infants are their oppressors, and women rule over them. Oh, my people, your guides mislead you, and they swallowed you up the course of your path. It was actually a sign of judgment for Israel, for a woman to lead them, because it was it showed how incompetent the men were. So the very verse that she or the, the one of the people she tries to use to demonstrate how great it is. See, a woman could be a pastor. Look, Deborah was a judge, which one that's not a pastor actually falls on her face biblically. But remember, we're the ones twisting scripture. Like as an evangelist and a, a, an apostolically Mary, the first one to proclaim the gospel that Jesus chose. It was not an accident. So because Mary was the first one to proclaim the resurrection, now women can be pastors. Again, that doesn't mean you're a pastor. Women can share truth. And I'm thankful for the women, many women uh, in our church, my wife, who, who share, share truth. It is not. It, it, yes, women can share truth. It doesn't make you qualified now to be a pastor. But we're twisting scripture, right? We got to keep saying that. He's, he chose her to reveal to first, and he entrusted her with the very big responsibility of being the first one to declare that he had rose from the grave. Yeah, it's evangelism. To the disciples, to the men. She said it first. They ignore, they ignore the, the, the teacher who Paul entrusted with to, to bring a message to one of the churches. They so, uh, because someone brought a letter at church, that now means they can be a pastor. See, see, all the arguments she gives falls flat on their face when you examine them critically, right? None of the arguments she has actually given are good biblical arguments, right? And them are arguments that just make you say, what? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Those. And they find the scriptures that, that, that appeases them, that they can twist and they show. Yeah, no, we find the scriptures that explicitly are about the subject of eldership or a pastor. You go to texts that aren't about elders and pastors and insert, therefore, your conclusion. You're the one doing what you're claiming we're doing. This is this is a fallacy known as projection fallacy. Right. When someone claims you're doing something they're actually doing. This is a projection fallacy. Um, how dare you? Shove it, shove it, shove it, shove it. That's the spirit. Whenever you see those comments on the Facebook all the time, Second Timothy, the T Timothy scripture about women can't preach. You know that's the spirit of religion is behind what behind that keyboard. <laughs> so someone quotes a passage and it's the spirit of religion behind the keyboard. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, Catherine Crick has no idea what she's talking about. Um, my prayer is that there are those who are following her who are just ignorant and deceived and that they would come out. That's the true deliverance ministry. Come out in Jesus name. Right. Again, don't forget right after this video, this video, if you just stick around, this video will take you right to a live where we're going to continue part two of Catherine Crick's book review. You don't want to miss it. We're going to get straight into it. Hope to see you there. God bless.